Now in this lecture, what we are going to derive is the expression for the shear stress in rectangular beams. It's nothing special. Your tau still is equal to, you know, uh, V times Q divided by I times T. But rectangular beams in particular require special mention because most of the beams that you see around in the RC structures or in other structures are rectangular, have rectangular cross sections. So it's, it's important to sort of make this a little bit of a special case and find that the, how the tau varies across the entire height of this rectangular cross section that is there so let's go ahead and derive the expression and have some you know interesting discussions on this particular topic that is there so what we have over here is a rectangular beam where which has a height h you know or the depth is h and the width is b and subjected to a shear force v over here now what i'm trying to do is that i'm trying to derive the expression for the shear stress at any given point so let's say at a point y at a distance y from the neutral axis over here so about this particular line i'm trying to find that what is the value of tau so what i'm, I'm trying to find is that over here all along this particular width what is this value of the tau that is acting so now for these ones remember that we have already derived the formulation stays unchanged we know that our tau equals to v times q divided by i times t over here now let's break down these individual components that are there so the v is nothing but the applied shear v over here now coming to q now q is what q is the product of the area times the distance of the centroid of the area from the neutral axis you could take the top area or the bottom one doesn't matter so let's just you know take the top area in this case so here your q is going to be equals to a prime times y bar prime right so this is a prime times y bar prime this distance over here now if you substitute the expressions and i'm not going to go into the details of that it's fairly simple for example your a prime is nothing but you know product of this width and this height over here so this width is b and this height if you see the total height is h over 2 the distance of the neutral axis from this section plane is y so this is h over 2 minus y and similarly you can find this y bar prime as well in terms of h over 2 and y over here so what you, after you substitute these guys over here and i encourage you to do that if you want to you know because it's just simple algebraic manipulations what you will get eventually for the expression of q is something like this you will get q as equal to b over 2 h square by 4 minus y square so that is your q right so that takes care of this q guy over here now i remember i is for the entire section of for the rectangular section it is very easy to write for the rectangular section your i becomes equals to 1 by 12 b which is the width times the depth q 1 by 12 b times h cube that you have over here and the last thing in this expression is this t t is remember is the width at which you are calculating this tau over here so this width over here since it's a rectangular cross section t is nothing but equals to this b that you have over here right so t is equals to your b so after you substitute all of these guys that is this guy and you know this guy in the formula for tau equals to vq by it the expression for tau that you get it boils down to something like this so this is the expression of tau that we get right so if we you know sort of highlight this expression what do you see just from an initial glance so what you see over here that from the nature of the expression itself it's a quadratic variation so tau has a parabolic variation across the cross section so let's make a quick note of that so tau So it has a parabolic variation as you can see now let's calculate the shear stress tau at different points of interest across the cross section what can be some of the points of interest one of the point of interest is that at exactly y equals to zero so that is at the neutral axis over here what is the value of tau i would be interested in and also maybe at the extreme edges that is at plus h over 2 minus h over 2 over here what is the value of tau so let's first calculate a tau at y equals to 0 and then at the extreme edges over here so first when you calculate at the neutral axis what we can write that tau at the neutral axis so that means tau at y equals to 0 if you substitute y equals to 0 in this expression what you eventually what you essentially get if you put y equals to 0 over here this guy goes for a toss 
your h square and this h cube it cancels out you have a h here and then 6 divided by 4 becomes equals to you know 1.5 or 3 over 2 so you will get the value of tau equals to 1.5 times v divided by b times h which can be further simplified to 1.5 times v divided by a now this brings us to an important point what do we know by v divided by a what is v divided by a it is simply the shear force that you have over here divided by the b times h and what did we say that particular terminology is you're right it is just the average stress right so we have has we had sort of defined in a, in, a, in a crude sense that our average stress is the shear force divided by the area so v divided by a is nothing but the tau average so now do you get a sense that how, that 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 uh, you know expression is is kind of wrong because within the section cross section you can have regions near the neutral axis where the shear stress can be one and a half times the average shear stress that you have so let's maybe quickly make a note of that that your v divided by a is nothing but tau average right so this expression boils down to right so this is at one point of interest at the neutral axis now let's see the other points of interest at plus h over 2 and minus h over 2 over here so if you put that h over 2 you will see this guy becomes 0 so essentially your tau at this edges is equals to 0. So what does this mean that means that in a rectangular cross section see how interesting this is that in a rectangular cross section at the top and at the bottom over here the shear stresses are absolutely zero and it kind of also makes sense can you tell why because you see this shear we had hypothesized it has a complementary shear in the longitudinal direction right now the top of the beam there is no or no force which is acting across the surface so, and at the top of the beam you don't have any force acting over here so that means the complementary shear exactly at the top is going to be zero and that's how it works out so at the top and the bottom since there is no force no external force over here the complementary shear must also vanish so it becomes equals to zero over here while at this central point over here you have 1.5 times v divided by a and the entire variation is parabolic so if we just have to sketch the variation of tau across the cross section how does it look like across the cross section the variation looks like this where at the top you have tau equals to zero at the base you have tau equals to 0 and at the center over here you have tau equals to tau max this is the highest stresses happen over here that is 1.5 times v divided by e right so this is the variation of the shear stress across this rectangular cross section at the top as well as the at the bottom now remember that this stress which i which i which i drew over it is from elevation so if you are looking at this from this particular side so it is zero across this entire line at the center it is 1.5 times across this center now let's take a look at this figure in 3d for a better understanding so it looks something like this over here right so here see at the top it is zero and this is the parabolic variation that you are seeing and at the center it is a max a tau max which is over here which at the neutral axis it is 1.5 times the average shear stress. this is extremely important so this sort of you know takes a hit to your uh, concept of the average stress because within the beam you can have regions where the actual shear stress is actually one and a half times several times than the average shear stress that you have and the tau minimum in this case is zero which is at the top and at the bottom over here now if we from the perspective of complementarity if you take a look at the stresses at you know at the center line over here it looks something like this so if uh, here so and and also one more thing before we move on this figure just shows is at the edges over here but all throughout it is actually say like a 3d kind of a parabola so all throughout you have this you know parabolic variation that is there now now remember that in i think one of the lectures one of the introductory lectures we had said you see the 
size of the arrows which are representative of the magnitude you see the size of the arrows at the center is much bigger than the ones at the edges and now you know the reason why because the size of the arrows are highest here because you have the highest amount of shear stresses here and negligible shear stresses at the very top and at the very bottom and a parabolic variation throughout now coming to that central line over here because of complementarity remember at the neutral axis if this is my tau max over here i have a complementary so this is from complementarity as a result of which you have an equal shear which is going along this longitudinal axis over here now i will show you an example where beams rectangular beams wooden beams which are wood is a, a material which is not very strong in shear so for wooden beams if you if you go to very old houses you know where or uh, you know in, in some of the very old you know uh, places of religious worship that you have these wooden beams and the purlins and the rafters that is there you may find this kind of a scenario you may find cases where your crack has sort of propagated at the center this is a shear crack that you have so now you know when you see these beams that why this crack has happened it has simply happened and very interesting thing to note you see this crack it it, it propagates along the longitudinal axis that also gives you that that sense of complementarity that is there at the center the tau is the maximum that is this tau max that you have over here and because of complementarity this shear sort of propagates across this length of the beam that you have over over here and as a result of which you have some kind sometimes you can have a crack or a some or kind of a failure over here so in a nutshell overall what did we learn for the beams with a rectangular cross section what we essentially learned was that the maximum shear stress is much higher that is 1.5 times at the average shear and it happens at the neutral axis and since it's a rectangular cross section neutral axis is exactly at the center and also one more thing we learned is that your you have a zero shear at the top and at the bottom over here because and the reason is that you know if you intuitively want to you know uh, sort of uh, think about it that there is no tangential shear load at the at the top surface or at the bottom surface of the beam so that means the complementary shear over here must also be equal to zero now that we have this let's derive let's do an example problem not for a completed rectangular section but but some kind of a structure that is you know made of individual rectangular pieces so let's go ahead and take a look